Hello and welcome to the NBS Reviews. I am your host Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. You say there's no wrong way to fantasize? I have some fan fictions I'd like to show you. Oh my! And also introducing my bra, Will. Oh my gosh! Do we have do we have the time to do this? Are, are we gonna, are we gonna do this review right? I mean, it's the first one of the, of the season. Everyone's gonna be expecting good things. What happens if we screw this up? What happens if we screw up this review? What happens if they don't like our review? What happens if they think our review is terrible? What happens if no one turns in? What happens if the recording gets deleted? <laughs> don't even joke with that last one, my friend. Yeah. Well, in which case, Norman bites the big one. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! That hurts. Oh! You got more oh, of it if you hit the delete key there, Sonny. Oh, don't even talk about the delete one. That happened once. It was not fun. So, anywho, um, we are going to review the premiere for season seven, Celestial Advice. So, what can I say about this episode except stating down the synopsis, which is Twilight Sparkle agonized over Starlight Glimmer's future and seeks advice from Princess Celestia. So, yay! This seems like a really fun episode. Um, let's go for first impressions, and I'll start off with Silver. Ah, well, what a fun season premiere. I'm a little biased because I saw this at uh, BabsCon with a room full of people, and that always influences how one receives a show. You get to hear people laughing. You get to hear them just cheering as the commercials end and the episode resumes. So it influences the energy level. But even on its own, I think this is a fun episode. We get to see a return of Nervous Twilight. I'll say this. This is a Twilight episode that features Celestia. I wouldn't call this a Celestia episode yet, but it's probably one of her most positive showings. In fact, it it adds something retroactively to a lot of other uh, episodes that really, I think, enhances Celestia's presentation. And also introduced Trolestia. Well, actually, I think it reduced Trolestia. Really? <laughs> you didn't see her laughing at Twilight as really trollish? Not really. I think uh, at first it seems trollish, but then uh, then you see her motives and, and why, and you think, ah, yeah, that's really nice. I won't call you a troll this time. All right, all right. This and time. Will. And Will, so what about you, my friend? Um, the other thing, first impression I have is that sounds a lot like Emperor Palpatine there, Silver. Your faith in the last Jedi may be disappointed. <laughs> I can't have faith be disappointed if you have no faith at all. Anyway. <laughs> Woo, harsh. <laughs> so as it goes, first impressions for this episode. Gosh. Uh, first impressions basically in my mind was, uh, yay, Celestia's finally getting more screen time. Sure, it's short, but gosh, it's something. Oh, that just made me happy and giddy at all throughout the entire thing. Plus, we got to, well, basically got to see a few more sides to the whole, even though Twilight is not really her student anymore, that doesn't mean they she can't still have a mentor figure out of Celestia, which is nice. And it's amazing how much uh, her Celestia's lessons in letting Twilight off to learn her on her own eventually turned her into sort of a mini Celestia of some kind. She emulated her own teacher. Even subconsciously, with it seems the way they panic, eat the way they panic. <laughs> so uh, yeah, first impressions was I, l- I liked it. And as for me, I like this episode. This was one of those episodes where ah, huh, we start off as a slice of life and just one episode. Huh, that's okay. That's different. And we got Discord after the whole news debacle of oh um. Uh, Discord's not going to be in season seven. Oh no! Oh the the horror! Oh the horror! And suddenly, yeah, Discord first episode. Won't someone please think of the children? <laughs> yeah, think of the children that love Discord. Mm-hmm. But anywho, yeah, we we got Discord. We we finally get to hear Torex talk, and we got to see a lot of things in this episode. Overall, I really like this episode, especially with. Celestia and Panicky Twilight we haven't got a lot of that in the last season. And as much as we seen off season seven, we got a few of fun moments with Twilight, so that's awesome. But anywho, um as per usual, if you guys have not seen this episode yet, please do note that we are going to go D 
deep into spoilers. So I would suggest that you pause this video here and continue on after you've watched it. And welcome back. So we start off this episode with Spike going up to Starlight talking about stuff that she already knows. Um, essentially, this would have been called a recap. Or how does the nostalgia critic sing it? Exposition, exposition, this is how the story goes. <laughs> oh, I have it, the breath control. <laughs> yep, yep. But of course, his whole uh, talking is nothing more than a distraction for Twilight to sneak into the room and do some very interesting measurements to the desk behind her. That's all revealed to us as Twilight measuring to get a wall mirror. So, yay. <laughs> And actually, um, if may interject, Spike, I forgot to mention in the uh, first impressions, but Spike here is going to start showing probably his best interpretation of Spike, especially in this episode. But we'll talk about that further on. Wait, wait. Did you just say best interpretation of Spike? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's the best characterized in this episode. By uh, all right, all right. Both the sense of he's the. He's the sense, the grounding force. He's the grounding force who's delivering plenty of side snark of watching the events unfold. But we'll discuss that further as it gets along. <laughs> All right, then. And as per usual, when Spike asks, like, oh, um, is the celebration ready yet? And Twilight just says, Pinky's on the case. And now we get to see how Pinky does party. It's just with a push of a, well, technically this is a pull of a string or rope. And party's ready. Woohoo. And I wish I had something like that to set up for a party. It's just press a button. Bam. Done. I know, right? I'm, yeah, it was insanely jealous when I saw that. Just imagine what you, how much time you could spend slacking off afterwards. Oh, no, <laughs> no man should have that much power. <laughs> uh, except Dio. Oh, uh, actually, great. Now I'm thinking of red versus blue. I'd be unstoppable. Technically, you'd already be stopped. Completely stoppable. Oh, gosh. But anywho, uh, we go to the party where the other fives are given the Equestria Pink Heart of Courage. Yes. Which, you know, you get a purple heart for being wounded. You get a pink heart for courage. What do you get for a blue heart? Just the, the cries? No, you get heart. You get heartbreak and sadness. Ah. <laughs> uh, but still, our, our other heroes... They're getting awards, yay. And the placing of the, mm, I won't say necklace. What do you call those? Medals? Yes, sorry, medals. The placing of the medals on our heroes are interesting. For Starlight and Trixie, they're placed on normally. This card has to pop his head out to fit in. And for Torex, uh, how, how, how in Luna's name did she get it on? Very yeah, elastic. She probably she probably remembered she has teleportation powers. True, but Torex could just mm, shape shift his head to make it a bit smaller or something like that. Or she could be like the fans and just rage over his new design. These antlers are so stupid. I hate them. These antlers look dumb. Well, maybe it turned out they weren't antlers. It turns out they were pincers, and he was able mm. to close them. True, true. And honestly speaking, the design of the new changeling has grown on me. Yeah, the changelings, they've grown on me, but Thorax's design is still a color theory mess. At least in my opinion. True. True, but like I mentioned, he has grown on me. Like fungus. Oh <laughs> no! <laughs> like a warm fuzzy puppy. A fuzzy puppy with huge <laughs> antler pinster horn thingies. Yeah, why well, not right? Do you think it's like wiggling your ears that he just wiggles them and he clamps whatever happens to be above him? Probably. <laughs> I can't believe we're having this discussion. But hey, well, look on the bright side. At least that way he can get the things off the top, the tuppy top of the shelf. Oh, there you go. Oh, gosh. That's... But anywho, party starts and we see ponies mingle. And we get to see Andy Price planning something with Mare Mare. I wonder what that is going to be. Probably a new comic. <laughs> Oh, yes. Andy Price. She's like, so would you like to star in a solo? We could do better than the uh, election comic. <laughs> we can actually make you look like a respectable uh, person again. And the best thing is, I'll be writing it. 
<laughs> Double best of all, there's no dang election to break everyone's hearts. Ah! Yay. Uh, but we get to see ponies mingle, uh, doing mingly things. And Twilight being proud. Twilight is proud of Starlight with her achievements. And Celestia just pops in and says, oh, doesn't this feel familiar? Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't look familiar watching your students shine just like uh, you always knew they could. <laughs> yeah, we get the allegory, Celestia. Though to be fair, right before that, right before, right before that, I'm actually more amazed that all the changelings sound like munch, munchkins. We represent the lollipop world, the lollipop world, the lollipop world. <laughs> yes. Wait, does that make Christmas the Wicked Witch? <laughs> she looks good in ruby slippers, I'm sure. Oh gosh! Well, that's that. That's it. That's how suns. That's how. Uh, that's how Starlight Glimmer is going to defeat her. Just drop a house on her. <laughs> well, <laughs> actually, given some requests for your girls' spoilers, you probably could swing that. Oh gosh! <laughs> oh gosh! Oh, request for girls' spoilers for a later date. That that is just too awesome. But anywho, what spoilers? I'm gonna have to listen uh, later for this. Mm-hmm. But anywho. Discord comes in, you know, being creepy around Twilight, like he always is, and suggests Twilight has some kind of master plan for Starlight, like she got from Celestia, and panicking, Twilight doesn't, and starts to worry. And Discord, the troll that he is, mentions this to Starlight, and pushes the plan way in advance. How advanced is this? Well, let's just say that by the end of the episode, which is after the party. Good old Discord cousin to I like to think on her hooves. Yep. And we get Panicky Twilight. Which is the best Twilight. True, true. Who thinks Discord here is, well, in character and doing things just because he wants to see chaos? Oh, it's, that's Discord to a T. He's just, well, he's just like, ah, oh, Twilight, you're feeling confident and good. Well, we can't have that. <laughs> yep. Uh, but, uh, jerky discord. But still, he is the guy that gets the plot running, so yay. And he's the guy who, with whom all the Fluttershy ship fix are swinging. Oh yeah, totally. I can totally buy that. Uh, but anywho, Twilight panics and goes to her chambers, and Spike notices. Spike comes in and asks, are you reading during a party again? And Twilight has issues. In other news, the sky is blue, water is wet, and America is conflicted. <laughs> uh, indeed. But anywho, Twilight goes into a panic and asks Celestia for advice. And Celestia is puzzled at first, but once Twilight explains things, and yeah, she already knows where this is going, and please, uh, and just rolls with it. And Twilight comes to the conclusion of, I have to send Starlight Glimmer away, like you did me. Oh, uh, no. Dun, dun, dun. All right, kid, you were here for one season. Get out. <laughs> Here's your stuff. Get off my lawn and start earning your way in the world. Oh, God. Oh, and take this. She throws, the, uh, she throws up the journal. Write in it. Send it back what you learned every week. Uh, and find friends. Do that. Do that. Uh, but still, uh, there's a conclusion, and we get to see her accepting this fact, and starts off with a plan to send Starlight to the Changeling Kingdom. Yay! Huzzah! Yeah! Here comes a new challenger! Hello, Sappy. I am a figment of your imagination. Yeah, glad you can make it. So, how are you doing? Pizza. All righty then. Oh, so you're feeling uh, a little cheesy. Ha 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 ha. I was gonna say your figment of imagination here, Norman, seems to be projecting your stomach. Yes. Pizza Where's spot. my Starbucks drink, Silver? God damn it. Uh, but anywho, but anywho, Sappy. Uh, first impressions of the season. What do you think? Um. Um, okay, well, uh, <laughs> it's, it's difficult to say, like, my first impressions, because it's like, 
I I like the change in pace, but at the same time I don't. Hmm. Okay, that's an oxymoron. I know you're calling an oxymoron. Strange. <laughs> so, so forgive me. I'm mixed on the uh, situation. Hmm. All righty then. But anywho, uh, you miss a bit, but I'm sure you can catch up. Uh, where we left off is Twilight fantasize or imagines how putting Starlight in the Changing Kingdom would be. You're imagining me, that's what. Uh, well, it's rather stiff. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Crooked? No, not crooked. Um, help me here if you know the word for this one. It's rather... Mechanical? Uh, as they talk. Or... Yeah, true, but I'm forgetting word. I, I know after Sweetie Bot edits this, I will come with the word. I really hate that. But anywho, um, they're, they're really stiff, like they're reading off a script. And I just like the, one of the changelings answer for how do we do compromise. And that's with battle. <laughs> yes, the winner shall decide. <laughs> I like that. I wouldn't say trial by combat is an invalid way to settle things. <laughs> it happens in Star Trek, so it must be the right answer, right? Ta 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 ta. Yeah, now obviously, change names would solve all their things with compromise by doing rock paper scissors. Unfortunately, most of these matches tend to go on for a while because nobody can play anything else but rock. Oh, wait, no, but that's the whole point. Florex can now use scissors, which loses to rocks, so it's completely useless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but at the same time, too, you have, you guys have to remember that this is Twilight's fantasy, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who knew Twilight had such a rigid imagination? Yeah, and well, as she imagines things more, um, one of her fears is that one of the changelings might sabotage and cause a ruckus. Um, having Twilight do some mean things to the changeling and the changeling gets really angry and starts to beat her up. Yeah, <laughs> probably that won't happen, but... And by doing a ruckus, you mean summoning a gigantic fly swatter? <laughs> Which was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, uh, animated violence is always hilarious. Well, here's the thing. I'm I'm thinking back to um, Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers, in fact, <laughs> where they were interrogating the fly, Zipper, and uh, all they said was, uh, which do you fear more, a nuclear reaction? Shows a mushroom cloud, Z- Zipper's like, eh, what ifs. Or a fly swatter. <laughs> <laughs> Have you not known, like, insects can survive nuclear radiation? Well, that's just it. When when Pinky finally goes too far and creates the party nuke, the changelings will inherit Equestria. Yes, like we plan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but anywho, um, Twilight imagines the worst, and you know what? Probably the changeling empire is a terrible plan. Terrible, terrible, terrible. So she goes to the next best thing, the Dragonlands. Yay! We get to see Ember, and oh my goodness, this is. I know this is all in Twilight's head, but the bro forceness of this one is too strong. Oh god, bro force. Yeah, I, I think uh, there's a Stallone movie. You remember Over the Top? Well, I'm thinking of a video game. Yeah, that too, but I'm thinking about Over the Top with the arm wrestling thing. Remember that one? Oh yeah. Oh, that Schwarzenegger one, um, where his daughter got kidnapped or something like that. Commando? Yeah! Weren't we talking about ponies? No, 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 no. You see, you see, Safi, now we're talking about how amazingly masculine these ponies can be. So masculine that they could grow epic long beards and comb them in the wind. <laughs> well, as long as they don't shave it off like Jack did. I could see Twilight with a, with a violet and striped beard fluttering in the wind, Ooh. the sun reflecting <laughs> off the follicles. Hey, you know what? And that she actually reflects that... on how she forgot in her path. Uh, that's a, that's a main, Safi, but close. Actually, that reminds me of a uh, good old phrase: "By Celestia's beard." <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember that. It the, the didn't catch on. It didn't catch on. But anywho, we get to see Ember again, and it's totally awesome, dude. 
Dude. Nineties kid would enjoy this one. Of course, Spike, just like the just previously, was uh, able to point out uh nobody speaks like that. <laughs> and yet Celestia uh, Celestia says a line which will live in infamy. And uh, that line is There's no wrong way to fantasize. Ooh. Uh, hey, Celestia, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to introduce you to a website. It's called FIMfiction.net. <laughs> oh, God, no. And it was on that day that Celestia declared war on humanity. <laughs> oh, God, no. Uh, I, I still think the greatest quote that I've ever heard from the episode, though, thus far is, hmm, I wasn't aware that I was an expression. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but still, oh wow, after the failed fantasization of the dragons, um, another safer place, you know, one that doesn't get Starlight killed, is the Crystal Empire! It's the most boring place on Equestria! Well, it's certainly the least on proactive. Equestria? What? No, it's not boring? No, I meant like on Equestria or in Equestria? I've, I've in Equestria? Heard... What did I say? I think you said, said on Equestria. It's yeah, the most boring then. place on Equestria! Like, there's a difference now? Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, te- <laughs> but, technically Tartarus is in Equestria, but it's not on top, it's below. So, yeah. it's re- it's really boring down there. Uh, <laughs> Jirek is just looking up saying, can't I have a book or something? Uh, but, but, anywho. And the Crystal Empire is quite boring. I mean, come on, you Cadence know, herself had to... <laughs> Cadence herself even was quoted saying, it's just so boring there. I had to get some excitement. Oh my. <laughs> uh, but uh, anywho, but anywho, uh, we have uh, Twilight fantasize about Starlight in the Crystal Empire. And, well, the Crystal Empire seems okay because she'll have Sunburst there to well, interact with, you know, another friend to rekindle and probably start a family and whatnot, but still, that's besides the point. Oh, you're taking the interaction thing a far away. <laughs> hey, if Twilight can find this, I so can I. Friends with which to interact. Mmm. <laughs> but, eh. <laughs> uh, I think Sunburst here has more competition from Trixie and Mart now, so, yeah. Well, n- knowing knowing Bookie, uh, well, not Bookie, but knowing Brainy Starlight, she would probably just try and hook up with Sunburst anyway. Hey, Sunburst, you plus me plus minus those clothes of yours. Let's oh, get yeah, busy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, show like two maybe at most. Will, Will, that joke is going to cost you an arm and a leg. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute, an arm and a leg? You mean like what they try doing next? <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, just apparently he's going to be in a full suit of armor. <laughs> apparently, um one of Twilight's fears is that Sunburst and Starlight will take the spell casting too far and somehow envelop themselves into a dark void of nothingness. I thought they just created a miniature black hole, which, if one was created on the surface of a questure, would eventually suck the entire planet into it within, I think the record, is, it would be, if they did that on Earth, would be, oh, less than 12 minutes. So congratulations, you destroyed the entire planet on a class 10 scale. But it only it only sucked up starlight is the funny thing. No, no, I think Sunburst got in there too. Yep, he did. Well, no, he, he's shouting down the hole after her. Oh. He's called Starlight, Starlight. This is the wrong hole we talked about filling. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh, gosh. But anywho, uh, uh, you know what? I think Celeste agrees with that joke. She's laughing at Twilight about that. She, she's laughing. No! <laughs> uh, boys. But <laughs> I, I think... Celestia's not laughing at her, but with her because of, well, this reminded her of herself when she was uh, tutoring or mentoring Twilight. Because when seeing Twilight grow up and develop as a pony and deciding what to do with her, she's academically 
advanced. She knows what to do. In fact, she's the top of her class. But there's one big difference. She doesn't mingle around with other ponies. And even at a young age, she's a loner. And Celeste was worried. She had the master plan of sending her to Ponyville because... Over there, she knows a few fillies that can get Twilight to where she is now. But her fears of the unreasonable keep stopping her from pushing her to Ponyville. I find this funny when Celestia mentioned, what if she runs into a manticore? Or what if she gets pulled into Tartarus? Or worse of all, what if she doesn't get along with any pony? I mean, her fears are valid. I laugh because all I think of is rarity in Philly Vanilli. You live your worst fear. Was it really that bad? Because <laughs> technically everything she was afraid of did come true, except she got sent oh, to yeah. Tartarus. And that's why I find it funny, like, huh, Mentacore, day one. <laughs> day one is like, ah, dang it. But the guards here too are cool because, um, are we supposed to say something? Uh, <laughs> uh, those two guys are cool. Uh, the guards were funny. It was also kind of cool seeing a bit of Twiley in her uh, early uh, childhood years and seeing her other classmates, which also called back to uh, her previous friends of Moondancer, Twinkle Shine, and Lemon Hearts on uh, Cold Gate and all that. Mm-hmm. All that good stuff. And, well, we get to see a bit of character development for Celestia here, which is a plus on all sides. And, well, Celestia mentions that, hey, even though you're not my student anymore, you can always come to me for any advice because you're still my best friend and whatnot. And after that, it's time for Starlight's graduation. A surprise graduation. Yes, because the way that this is dropped is like a bomb because, yeah, uh, this was unexpected. It's a pleasant surprise, but outright saying that, Starlight Glimmer, you're no longer my student. <gasps> Now, be off with you! <laughs> no, no, it, it didn't turn out that way, but still, um, since she's, well, advanced so far, Twilight decides that, hey, um, you've done everything that I've done, and it's time for you to spread your wings and do the things that you need to do on your own. And everybody's happy, everybody's hyped, and, well, Starlight goes to, Twilight and says, I'm not ready for this. Please don't let me go. I I, I don't want to go. The world's scary. Please. It's cold and I don't know where else to go. <laughs> I don't know yeah, where to yeah. go. You're giving me free room and board. Come on. What? I mean, who else is going to fill up this castle? It's not like you have a boyfriend or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't face the world. I'm a millennial. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Wow. But anywho. Hey, hey, hey. If you're going to start off with that, buddy, I can start pulling out some baby boomer jokes here. Oh, God. oh no, wait, wait. And that's too old for you. Generate some <laughs> extra jokes. Exactly. But anywho, Twilight gives the gift to Starlight, and, well, they bond, and party's over, I guess. So, yay! Oh, and of course, Discord is a little bit upset. It's like, oh, great job not picking up what I was throwing we down. Did it. I won my freaking roommate. Yeah, but still, um, episode ends. Pinky cleans everything with a push of a button from so the jealous. party vac. So <laughs> very <Yeah>. jealous. <laughs> yep, indeedy. I wish I had a machine. Uh, but episode ends, and well, what do you guys think? Silver. Well, this is a fun episode. Like I say, it, we kind of glossed over seeing Celestia worry, which is something important. For a long time, people people assume that she, because she has prophetic dreams, she knows how everything goes out. So she could probably just be sipping tea like a bala while this fight's going down. And in truth, however, she's worrying herself into a gray mane, <laughs> a very flowy gray mane. And it's it's actually kind of refreshing to see her worry and just show, no, this is not some this is not some divine plan that's been scripted out in advance. This is doing the best you can with what's happening and trying to do the best by your student. Which makes me appreciate Celestia even more. Like I say, it's still not quite a Celestia episode, but it's an episode where Celestia gets to show a new side of herself. It's a Celestia Twilight episode. With a mix of starlight. 
And most fans have been wanting this side of Celestia because, to be honest, we haven't really gotten a full-fledged Celestia episode where things are focused on her, things are, well, involving her. The best we got last few seasons is the only thing that pops into the tea party. And also, well, listen... Uh, <coughs> not, yet. not yet, at least. Yeah, true. Uh, and I think Lesson Zero, was it? Yeah. Wait, Lesson Zero? What was that episode called? Yeah. 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 Lesson Zero, yeah. where Twilight wigs out and Celestia comes to the rescue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm afraid it's the only time Celestia comes to a rescue. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> although, there is one... Everyone talks like this uh, episode has no connection to the next one that aired the same day. I'm going to posit there is at least one connecting thread. Oh. One golden thread. Starlight? <laughs> Two golden threads. <laughs> In All Bottled Up, which we'll get to, mm-hmm. they mention imagining the the teacups. Imagine what you want to turn something into or imagine where you want to go. So one thing we've learned about unicorn magic is that oftentimes it requires a very strong imagination. Imagination. And here we see Twilight is one of the most powerful former unicorns, now an alicorn, and her imagination runs wild which is very much a part of her character. There's something to, to think about. Yep. She has yeah, great power because of her imagination, but she's also uh, slightly much a victim of her own imagination. Well, if we're going to go with that sense of logic of how unicorn magic works, yeah, I, I can see it. But at the same time, too, this is really difficult to, well, process. You're saying you can't imagine how? Not really, but... Let's go with that. Yeah, let's go with that. Do I have to sing the imagination song? No, thank you. But hey. imagination, imagination. Yeah, we're just gonna press fast forward on this. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay, but anywho, Seppi, what about you? What are your thoughts on this episode? Wait for the review, then you'll know. Wait for what review? Okay, no, good. No. I'll see you in six months. <laughs> uh, okay, um, and Wills, what about you? Oh, why? I, I liked this episode, um, and I'd say on a high end of liking. It was just nice to see more of the characters. I mean, true, I do miss the high action of the two-parter season openers we usually get, but eh, it was nice to see a bit more of Celestia's side and Get to see all the little changelings mingling, and to be honest, I just loved everything the changelings were in. Heck, there was a scene we glossed over just about the changelings asking questions to the main six about what friendship is, and one of the changelings says, it's like, so, friend, in order to have friendship, you have to have makeovers. <laughs> and Applejack's like, uh, well, not really, but Rarity's like, yes, 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 yes. Uh, Rarity's gonna start some kind of unwanted tradition, but have to because nobody knows the reason why. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so more changeling scenes and more Celestia scenes are what made me happy about the whole thing. And Spike. Oh, gosh. Every time uh, uh, Twilight started overreacting, Spike came in with the snark and the grounding. I mean, heck, on the third time, uh, he already knew that everything was going to go to hay in a handbasket with, uh, her, with Twilight's fascination, uh, fantasy with Starlight and Sunburst. He was able to count it down three, two, <laughs> one, bam. Just knew the exact second Twilight was going to go off the rails. He knows he knows uh, Twilight a bit too well. <laughs> yeah. But, but still, this episode, this episode. And as for me, I like this episode. Um, it's a strong opener. It didn't really push the whole two-part angle like all previous seasons because... I think this is the first season where we didn't open with a two-parter, which is refreshing. And the characterization of the characters, getting more push, getting more, well, getting more out there. This is fun. I I like this. I I like more development out of my characters. And we get to see the main five interact beforehand. I'm not 100% sure how accurate this is, because in one of Celestia's flashbacks, we get to see the main five, interacting like they're close friends. What do you guys think? Are they? Or are they just in a group? They they were 
probably, like, more or less, like, close acquaintances, like, minus, uh, you know, characters like Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash who have known each other since, you know, flight camp. So they were probably all pulled together in one way or another, at least, like, met mutually. Yeah, Rarity and Fluttershy sound like they've been friends for a while, that they've been doing their spa dates for a while, and, uh, oh, yeah, Fluttershy... That, like, you know... Fluttershy probably knew Applejack because of, you know, pets and farm animals and whatnot, and maybe Rarity and Applejack just met a couple times, maybe for hat repair. Hmm. And Pinky knows everyone. Everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and, and AJ and Rainbow would definitely know each other because Rainbow would pro- has been known to be sleeping under apple trees, <laughs> and R- Rainbow was part of the weather team. She had to bring weather to the farm, so dang it, where's that lazy, good-for-nothing Rainbow Dash? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, after you explained that, we, I can see them as friends. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I viewed it as sort of a, uh, mm, connection, a bit of a, but nothing uh, until like Twilight came in. Yeah. I saw this as just a little bit of a retcon saying that they were all really close laughing and hanging out together. Sometimes the interactions in the first few seasons made me think, wow, they only just, Twilight really is the golden thread here. She's the one who, what brought them all together, truly. The glue that holds them together. Oh wait, bad analogy. <laughs> uh, but, but I do. Agree. Yeah, but I do agree with you on that one, Silver, because it felt like a retcon, but it's almost not in the sense of we don't really know how well they know each other. Like what Will explained just now seems sensible. So it. A possibility of both things going on. Either we're thinking this is a retcon or they're just friends. Not close, not besties, but still just friends. Anyways. Mm-hmm. But anyways, there's the episode review. So, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, I do believe it is time to thank our Patreon supporters once again. Ah, yes. Ergo, we're going to take a look at some of the new talent that was featured in Season 6. Yep. More specifically, the writers. The writers who wrote for Season 6. Most of the newer writers, not including some of the veterans. Like Mike Vogel. I thought he was a vet, but no. He seems to be new f- for the series. And He's only had like one other episode like prior to the, uh, you know, Season 6 anyways. But anywho... Yeah, next week thing is going to be a Patreon sponsored video involving season six um, newly added writers. So stay tuned for that. But anywho, thanking the Patreon people, um, Lurker Cat, Toilet Genesis, Nemdrakotoria, Starstream, and Master of Light. Thank you for the support, guys. And if you guys here want to support us, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show and support us for a dollar to Five, five will get you a discussion, um, and also one will get you a thank you. Anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. I am Sapphire Heartsong. And I am Will I Zin, the man who's been the Zin. <laughs> uh, we'll guys catch you next week. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. Bonjour, no. No, wait, that's, that's a low. Uh, anti bonjour no. <laughs> Everybody loves somebody sometimes. What? No one's seen the latest episode of Jack? Considering we just got up? No, I've got to download it. <laughs>